saya nyalakan pak. Ya, oke. Okay. Ya, now it's on pak. Oke. Oke, shall we start now? Ya. Yeah. Oke. Okay. <coughs> Hello everyone, I am Edi Tri Baskoro. Good morning and also good morning in Barcelona. Sorry, and also good afternoon everywhere. Ya. Yeah. So welcome again to our Mathematics Distinguished Lecture Series. We are very happy to see you again in the second year of this uh, series. First of all, I would like to extend our gratitude to the Dean of the Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences, ITB, Professor Wahyu Sri Kutomo, for the constant support for this event. Our big welcome to our speaker today for this event. Professor Marta Sansole, a professor of mathematics at the University of Barcelona, Spain. She was uh, the president of the European Math Society 2011 until 2014. And she received a medal of the Royal Spanish Mathematical Society in 2017 and also many other awards. We also welcome to all the colleagues and students for attending this program. Thank you uh, very much for your participation and we really appreciate it. I would like to mention that the audience here are not only from Indonesia, but also from neighboring countries. As we can see that there are uh, about uh, 60 Uh, participants, but actually there are 275 people registered in this uh, event. Yeah, usually they come uh, after uh, the, uh, uh, the introduction. And they are from the Philippines, Thailand, Malaysia, some of from Japan, Japan, and then India, Myanmar, South Korea, and of course, uh, the majority from Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, this uh, Mathematics Distinguished Lecture Series is uh, organized by the Department of Mathematics, Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences Institute Technology, Bandung. And now this uh, afternoon, we are very uh, excited and honored to have Professor Marta Sansole from Universitat de Barcelona. Her talk will be chaired by Dr. Krishna Suhada. But before I hand it over to Dr. Krishna, let us take a group photo first. So, uh, Pak Rudy? Yes. Uh, can we have a group photo? Please okay. uh, help us, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Pak Edi. Uh... For all of the participants, uh, please turn on your camera. Uh, and actually, I already put the virtual background if you needed one in the chat. And here is, I have uh, three pages uh, of the uh, gallery. So I'll start with the first page. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. And then the second page, one, two, three. And then the last one, one, two, three. Okay, I think that's all, Pak Edi. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you, Pak Rudy. And now I invite uh, Dr. Krishna to share uh, this session. Dr. Krishna, please, uh, your time. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Professor Edi Tribaskoro, uh, Professor Marta Sansole. Uh, my name is uh, Krishna Shuhada. Um, I will be chairing your lectures. Uh, buenos dias. Uh, selamat pagi in Bahasa Indonesia, uh, uh, Professor Sansole. Uh, uh, it is a pleasure for us to have you for this lecture. Uh, friends, colleagues, and uh, students, uh, let me... Uh, tell a little bit more about Professor Marta Sansole. Uh, uh, for uh, her brief uh, CV of, uh, of her, 
Professor uh, Marta Sansole uh, hold PhD uh, about 44 years ago, a uh, long time, a long time ago. And uh, Professor Sansole has been a professor at University de Barcelona, UBE, since 1986. Prior to the position, uh, she was an associate professor in two universities in Barcelona, Universitat Autonoma de Barcelona and Universitat de Barcelona. Professor Marta Sansole uh, also has a visiting po position in many countries, uh, Switzerland, UK, Sweden, France, Italy, and uh, we can see numerous university uh, in which her position as a visiting uh, professor. It is uh, um, important to know that uh, her research interests include uh, random fields, analysis of winner space, stochastic differential equation, partial differential equation. And regard, regarding the publication, uh, Professor Sansole, as for uh, January 2022, uh, MedSynet records 100 articles uh, authored by uh, Professor Mata uh, Sansone. So um, now it is uh, time for Ma Professor Mata Sansole to give uh, uh, her lecture. Please, uh, Professor Mata, you may uh, start your lecture. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for this uh, nice introduction. And uh, also thank you very much to uh, Eddie, to Professor Eddie Trivascoro for the invitation to uh, contribute uh, to this uh, series of lectures. I, I found uh, uh, this initiative uh, very, very important for, for the cohesion of the mathematical community, not only, not only in your country, but, uh, but uh, worldwide. So uh, I, I feel very, very proud to, to be one of uh, its uh, contributors with my, it will be a small contribution, but anyway. Okay, so um, I will share my screen. And it will take um, some time because, um, well, to some time not, but that's so, all right. Yeah, but uh, yes. I will. I will do better. So okay. So I'm going to stop share. Again. So you need to do this twice, right, uh, Professor yeah, Sansley? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so now, now I think that is fine. Yes. So yes. I, yeah, I need the forward and backward also works. Yes. Yeah, yeah? It works. okay. Okay, so now everything is is fixed. So I will I will then I will start. So the title of uh, my talk is uh, very general, so modeling uh, with uh, with noise. Uh, but uh, in fact, uh, I will talk about uh, one of the main tools uh, which is used in modeling a mathematical modeling in presence of uh, randomness. So in, in presence of uncertainty. And this, uh, this uh, tool is called a stochastic partial differential equation, or stochastic partial differential equation. And this is one of uh, my research, it has been one of my research interests in the, in the last maybe more than, than uh, 20, 20 years. Okay, so I have divided the lecture into three parts. So let me see the time. Okay. So yeah, I will divide my lecture into, into three parts. So the first part will be uh, uh, an introduction, but it will be quite a long uh, introduction where uh, I will describe what uh, stochastic partial differential equation is. I will always use these acronyms, SPDE. Okay, so uh, I will go back to the origins uh, of this notion and the origin is stochastic differential equations. Then uh, I will try to explain what is the, the mathematical reason, so what I call the rational uh, behind stochastic partial differential equations, uh, so how they can be derived uh, rigorously. 
And then uh, finally, I will um, present some examples where the motivation of uh, SPDEs came from particular problems uh, of uh, real life, so uh, in modeling. So then after this uh, introduc introductory uh, section, I will move to uh, uh, part two, which is um, related with uh, the mathematics uh, behind SPDs. I will not be technical, so a little bit, but uh, I mean, in principle, this is a, a talk for a general audience of mathematicians, but nevertheless, uh, I thought that it was important to convey you uh, the message of uh, what kind of mathematics, what kind of uh, techniques are uh, used in the theory of a stochastic partial differential equations. Okay, so it will be a, a, a survey and not, uh, I, I am not going into, into technical details uh, at all. So then uh, at the end of this part, uh, we will uh, define the fundamental object for uh, modeling, which are the random field solutions to the stochastic partial differential equations. As we will see, so these random field solutions actually will be the model uh, for the uh, sample paths of evolutions, of uh, problems, real problems. Okay, and um, these objects uh, will be very, inter very interesting mathematical objects, and this opens the door to study uh, many different issues around uh, random field solutions of SPDs or even uh, SPDs in general. And I will focus in the last part, and the length of this part will depend, uh, of course, on, on time, on a particular problem. I have also been investigating in the last maybe 10 years, uh, which are problems related with the analytical and geometric properties of uh, these random field solutions. And this is what I call fractal properties because actually this is what it is about. And this is related with another notion of the notion of heating probabilities that I will uh, introduce uh, with uh, detail. So this is, this is the, the plan for the lecture. So uh, let's uh, start with uh, part uh, one. Okay, so uh, in order to talk about uh, stochastic partial differential equations, uh, I will start with the deterministic case. So what is a partial differential equation? Okay, so a possible description of partial differential equation in the classical case, so this is a notion that, uh, uh, well, almost every, everybody in the undergraduate uh, uh, studies of mathematics get uh, some, some, some ideas, some feeling. So uh, here for me, a partial differential equation will be a relation involving uh, a known function of uh, more than one bar variable, so at least two variables. So O is a domain, in uh, Rn and n is greater or equal to two. And this relation involves the unknown and also partial derivatives of this unknown up to a certain order k. Okay, so this is a, a, a generic description of a, a partial differential equation. So uh, one of the paradigmatic examples of a partial differential equations is the heat equation. So the heat equation was uh, discovered uh, by uh, Joseph Fourier. Uh, so this uh, goes back to a publication uh, in uh, 1888, I think, so in the yeah, 19th century. And uh, the heat equation describes the evolution uh, in time of the temperature of a body uh, which is uh, uh, conductive and uh, uniform. Okay, so um, now the parameter uh, y here uh, will be time and space, so Tx, and Utx denotes the temperature at time t on a point x. For example, if you consider a rod, uh, that means mathematically an interval uh, of um, uh, uh, bounded interval, say, for example, with endpoints 0 and L, 
the heat equation tells you that the evolution of this temperature is such that the partial derivative in time is equal to the second order partial differential uh, deriv partial uh, derivative in the space. So this is the Laplacian in uh, R1. Okay, so that's the heat equation uh, for uh, on the uh, interval, on the bounded interval 0L. And then uh, in each of these problems, in order to be well posed, whatever this means, I mean, in order to make a sound sense uh, of this notion, you need to put an initial condition, that means what happens when t is equal to zero, where, what is the departure point, and also in the case where the domain O is bounded, because O can be also Rn, okay? So it's not strictly include, but uh, well, could be strictly include. So if O is bounded, then you have also to put uh, some conditions on the boundary. So what happens uh, at the boundary? So here, I mean, this is not so important. So you put an initial condition and uh, in, in the case of a bounded interval, it's usual to put uh, either Dirichlet or Neumann boundary conditions. In the case of Dirichlet conditions means that uh, your temperature at the end point is zero. Okay, but this is not so important for the lecture. So just to, to, to you keep uh, the general description of a partial differential equation and a paradigmatic example. So if you uh, perform some um, simulations of the solutions to this equation, um, for example, I think that here you use uh, finite elements method. So uh, you find a picture like that. So here, this is time, okay? So that means that uh, at time equal to zero, you have an initial profile, which is this smooth function, okay? And then uh, the phenomena you see well, the solution looks very regular. And the phenomenon you see is that when time elapses, uh, so this initial profile diffuses, okay? And this is what in practice, you know I mean, from, from the real life, okay? So heat diffuses. And uh, more, more specifically, it can be proved mathematically that when time tends to infinity, so the solution, the solution tends, uh, tends to zero for any x. Okay, so that's uh, uh, very irregular. So now let's move to the subject of this talk. So stochastic partial differential equation. So I can describe also generically a stochastic partial differential equation in the following way. So uh, remember that for non-stochastic deterministic, I put f of uh, this equal to zero. So now for a stochastic partial differential equation, I add to the, this, to the previous description, uh, several new elements that I wrote in red. I hope that everybody sees the red. So uh, what are these new elements? So first of all, we encounter an omega here. So what is omega? Okay, so we have a probability space, omega, fp, as usually, and capital omega is the sample space. So in the statistics, this is the uh, space of observation, so to say, okay? So that's the sample space and uh, omega stands for randomness. So this is the argument that uh, represents randomness. So I put randomness here to start with. Then I add a term uh, which looks partially like the first one, okay? So this is the G of omega, and, the unknown and all the derivatives, okay? And I put here a factor, which is a stochastic process. So that means, that means I have a function which depends on omega, on randomness, but also on the uh, parameter, on the argument y. Okay, that's a stochastic process. So this is um, the, the, so the, the, the mathematical object representing an external random forcing or external fluctuation, random fluctuation. Okay, this is the noise. So for example, in the very simple case where G is a constant, so assume that G is equal to one, constant, well, would be uh, equal to one. So then you have, so the, 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 
to the pattern, the expression of a partial differential equation, but we have at this external noise, this random fluctuation. Okay, so this is in, uh, in, in more generally, so this random fluctuation will depend also on the unknown. Okay, and then you have a nonlinear, uh, a nonlinear uh, random fluctuation. Okay, so you have randomness everywhere, and you you could also uh, you can also put uh, you may uh, put random uh, randomness in the initial and in the boundary conditions. Okay, so it's not obligatory to put randomness uh, everywhere. So uh, you can maybe you you put randomness here but not here, or you put randomness here and here and not here. So I mean there are many many possibilities, and it depends on course uh, of course of the problem that motivates your SPD. So more precisely, if we refer to the uh, heat equation I introduced before, I can consider an example, and it's a very simple example, but mathematically is not so simple, but uh, it's a, uh, so here, the first view is simple, the uh, stochastic heat equation, a type of a stochastic heat equation. So in comparison with the Fourier um, equation, I have add, so the Fourier equation was, uh, uh, so this differential operator equal to zero, okay? So this equation, so what is in, what is in black, okay, uh, but uh, with sigma equal to zero. And then I add this uh, 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 term, which turns the equation into a non-homogeneous one, okay? And I put a noise, uh, this noise, uh, well, I will, I will later on be more precise on what it is. Okay, and as before, Tx stands for y. So this is, for example, a nonlinear stochastic heat equation. Okay. So now, uh, if uh, we do as uh, before uh, um, a numerical simulation, so I, I found this uh, beautiful simulation by uh, the, my colleague Tim Jacek, uh, who is in the uh, University of British uh, Columbia. So this is done by a finite, finite uh, difference method. And uh, again, so you have at uh, time equal to zero, so this is time as before, at time equal to zero, you have an initial profile. So you, you don't see the shadow here, but uh, uh, it should be uh, something like that, I suppose. Okay. And then, so your simulations uh, tells you that, for example, in the case where, um, in the case where this sigma Okay, in the case where this sigma is constant, so uh, for example, in the case where sigma is equal to 0 0.6, you have uh, this uh, evolution in time of uh, the solution. So you see that there is much more irregular. And in fact, the irregularity increases with sigma. Okay, so if sigma is bigger, so this will be much, much more uh, irregular. But again, so this uh, diffusive behavior still holds. But you see that uh, from, the, from the very uh, simple object uh, in the deterministic case, so here, even in the case where uh, the, the nonlinearity, so the, actually the noise, so the, the randomness comes only from the noise, only from the noise. So in, for some particular cases of noise that I will explain later on, we've, we found something uh, which is uh, some object that is much more interesting mathematically than in the deterministic case, okay? So um, let me go now to the origins. So um, where can we find the origins of the stochastic partial differential equations? So uh, as you know, uh, uh, partial differential equations are objects that have its roots in ordinary differential equations, okay? So the same happens here. So the roots can be traced back by, uh, uh, the, uh, by uh, the work of uh, Kiyoshi Ito, who um, in the... So in the period uh, 44, 46, and also in the 50s, but essentially during these uh, two years, he published uh, two papers, two seminal papers, where he um, set up the theory of a stochastic differential equations and um, stochastic in uh, integration also. So um, uh, Ito, uh, wasn't uh, looking to, uh, uh, you know, have uh, mathematical models for, but uh, rather uh, another 
which is of course related, but another problem. So uh, Ito was interested in the problem of uh, finding a realization in terms of a stochastic process of the uh, physical phenomena of diffusion. So at that time, uh, this um, physical phenomenon was uh, modeled through uh, 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 probability distributions uh, derived from Markov processes. Okay, so what uh, what Ito uh, find out is that uh, the, the 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 probability laws, the probability laws of diffusions actually are the probability laws of some stochastic process, which are the solution to some equations. And this is the equations he found out, he discovered, okay? So you see, you have an ordinary differential equation as, uh, as uh, was, uh, what is uh, written here in black. And then there is an additional term, which is exactly of the type, well, it's a simplification of the type I, uh, I, I showed to you before. And here, B dot stands for <coughs> the derivative of a Brownian motion. Okay, so f and g are functions, maybe random again, or maybe not. So it depends on the problem. But here the fluctuation is given by a Brownian motion. Okay, so uh, I think that in the lecture of Mar Martin Heyer, there, there was uh, well, some explanation of Brownian motion. So here I will not go into, into the historical details of a Brownian motion in order not to repeat, but just just to let you know that uh, so Brownian motion um, can model the, the movement of uh, some particles, which uh, physically are the solute in suspension in a liquid, which uh, also physically is, is a solvent. And that, uh, in fact, so the, the mathematical explanation uh, for this movement uh, was done simultaneously by Einstein and Smolushovsky. Okay, so this is Brownian motion here. And, but for us, Brownian motion, so we will forget about this uh, physical um, um, uh, explanation, which is, of course, a very fundamental and very important. But uh, uh, here we will use that uh, Brownian motion, you have to keep in mind for the future, is that Brownian motion is a Gaussian process, uh, which is centered and where the covariance is given by this formula. So Gaussian process means the following, so you, you don't know to, to know about the stochastic processes, but a little bit on probability. So a Gaussian process is a process, so it's a family of random variables, such that the finite dimensional distribution, so that means if you take a finite number of t's, the joint distributions of bt1, btn is normal. So normal law, you know what it is, okay? The normal distribution. Okay, and uh, they are centered means that the average, the mean is zero, and the covariance gives you the relationship between two of these random variables. And this covariance is given by the infimum between S and T. Okay, so that's a Brownian motion. So that's the, the, the that's a consequence of the uh, description by Einstein and Smolushovsky. So these are the origins of a stochastic partial differential equations. But uh, since uh, I would like uh, to, to, to orient my talk uh, into the field of modeling, at least, at least uh, partly, so I have also to mention that uh, before ITO, uh, such equations in a very simplified way already appear in the context of uh, um, <coughs> modeling. So uh, let me mention these two uh, the interesting um, uh, contributions. So the first one is by Louis Bachelier. So Louis Bachelier published his thesis in uh, the year uh, uh, 1900. Uh, it's called uh, the Théorie de la Speculation. And uh, Louis Bachelier was the, the student, a PhD student of uh, Henri Poincaré. And uh, I must say that, or oh, it, is, uh, it is popular, <laughs> it is very well known that uh, in fact, uh, uh, Poincaré didn't like a lot uh, this thesis because it was uh, somehow too much uh, practically oriented and, uh, uh, you know, but practically a little bit in the, in the bad sense because Bachelier was interested in, in modeling the evolution of the price of a risky asset in the stock uh, exchange market of Paris, okay? And then, well, he, 
he found a data and he tried to, to find a model for that. And the model he found, so this was around, you know, the 900, so uh, Brownian motion was, uh, so the, the work by Einstein published by in uh, 905, 1905. So uh, he used this model, okay? So this is a perturbation. So the evolution of, uh, of uh, the set uh, follows this equation. I forgot about the initial conditions. So it's a perturbation of Brownian motion. Or if you would, if you would like, uh, it, you can see that in another well, in a similar way, or maybe a little bit different. So the evolution follows this linear equation, okay? This uh, linear equation, but there is this external random perturbation, okay? So that's the first. The first, uh, I think that is really the first stochastic differential equation that appears in the literature. So later on, uh, Paul Langevin. Uh, also has uh, uh, proposed a very nice equation, which is called the Oshtein Ullenbeck uh, uh, equation uh, for the velocity of the Brownian particle. So this was uh, in, 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 in some sense uh, complementary to the uh, work of, uh, of um, to the work of, sorry, to the work of uh, Einstein, okay? Where uh, he described the, the evolution of the positions of Brownian motion. So uh, Langevin proposed a, a, a formula or equation for the velocity of the Brownian particle, okay? And the, so the formula or the equation is like that. So you have uh, that the velocity depends linearly. So varies linearly, so this is the acceleration, varies linearly with the velocity. This is due to a Stokes law. And then, but uh, in, in, in practice, uh, by modeling this, uh, so uh, some term uh, appears, which is also a random perturbation. And here there is another Brownian motion. So this is not the Brownian particle he is interested here, but an external Brownian motion who models uh, this kind of uh, fluctuations. Okay. So that's, um, that's uh, uh, the, the origins. And uh, so mathematically, you can, you can also uh, prove rigorously uh, the occurrence or the appearance of uh, uh, stochastic differential equations and stochastic partial differential equations. And there are several models for that. So here in this lecture, I, I found maybe uh, appropriate to, to talk about very briefly about the particle approach to SPDs, okay? And um, so there is a very, a very explicit description in this book that I, I recommend uh, um, if you are interested in, in this approach by Kotolenets, okay? Which, uh, so uh, this, uh, the appearance of these SPDs is explained um, as a transition from uh, what you uh, see uh, uh, at the microscopic level and you go further to what uh, in physics is called the mesoscopic level, okay? Which is something intermediate between microscopic and macroscopic, okay? So the description is like that. So at the mic microscopic level, uh, what we see uh, are individual particles, for example, the, the, the Brownian particles, okay? Uh, which are described in, in, in the classical physics and classical mechanics of Newton, for example, uh, by their positions, by their velocities and the mutual interactions. And uh, these mutual interactions, uh, in fact, so are uh, systems of deterministic couple nonlinear oscillators. So there are you know, equations, okay? So of course, uh, the, um, this is very complicated. You have uh, plenty of equations coupled, so that's uh, too difficult to, to, to work with. And then uh, what uh, physicists or mathematicians done are, so uh, they, they put together uh, particles, so they form small clusters, which in physics is called ensembles of particles that have uh, similar initial positions and velocities. Okay, so not very far from, from each other in terms of positions and velocity. You have these clusters, okay? And then there is a, a, a very crucial uh, input, which is the randomization. So here is where, uh, you know, randomness uh, goes into this process. Uh, so randomization of the initial distribution of clusters. So to each of these clusters, you assign a probability. And this probability, so this, so you can think of in terms of frequency, okay? So this probability or this frequency is determined by the relative size of the clusters, okay? So if a cluster is very big, so it has 
larger probability. So that, that, that makes a lot of sense. So then there is uh, an, another uh, not trivial uh, step, which is uh, called a coarse graining, which uh, is a, a sort of a representation of these clusters as cells in a grid for the positions and velocity. It is a mathematical model, so to say. And of course, it's a mathematical model, which is random because of these initial distributions. Okay, And then there is another very delicate uh, part, which is the scaling. So once you have this model, through some scaling, which obeys to physics, uh, physical uh, reasons, uh, you go to, so you obtain, you obtain a, a stochastic dif differential equation for the positions of a fixed number of large particles. Large particles means these clusters. So this is at the level of, uh, so you obtain a stochastic differential equations. And this is what is called the, the, the mesoscopic level. So then if the number of particles goes to infinity, then you obtain a stochastic partial differential equation. There's a limit, uh, uh, so limit, limiting process to go from the SDE to the SPDs. So the, there are very delicate issues here in the in the scaling, especially. But uh, this this I mean these are theorems. So that's a, the rigorous way to 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 obtain from what you observe. Okay, you observe at the microscopic level. So you derive a stochastic differential equations and a stochastic partial uh, differential uh, equations. Okay. So um, let me now give a, a couple of examples, or maybe a little bit more, some, some examples where uh, you obtain stochastic partial differential equations by uh, uh, some mm, problems, real problems, okay? So the first one is uh, um, somehow a fun problem, but uh, you can turn it into, into a serious problem if you wish. So uh, this example was uh, given in, by Walsh, who was one of the pioneers in the theory of a stochastic partial differential equations, he, he proposed this uh, example. So assume that uh, we have a guitar uh, left outdoors in a Santa store. Okay, so then what happens uh, with the strings is that, um, uh, uh, so they are, they are bombarded by sun grains. And of course, this, uh, uh, this, uh, they are heated, okay? So the, uh, all these uh, heats uh, are uh, given in, in some completely chaotic way. So there are many impacts. Uh, you can assume that they are independent from each other because of course the different grains are not, uh, you know, uh, uh, connected to each other. And uh, they, they appear at different places of the string and at different times, okay? So the, here there is a, a clear uh, external uh, random uh, random uh, um, input or forcing, okay? So uh, then you, you may ask what tune will the guitar play, okay? So you play the guitar, but of course, since, the, since the, uh, your string is, uh, is uh, perturbed by this storm, so then the tune will be different, okay? So uh, the, uh, the displacement of the string from equilibrium, which gives you the tune of the of uh, what you play in the guitar is uh, governed by a wave equation. So wave equation is an object like that, okay? So uh, again, so this is the known, the differential operator is a second derivative in time minus the Laplacian equal to zero. But here we have to add this randomly fluctuation external noise, which is F dot, okay? So a possible model for this will be this stochastic partial differential equation. So forget about the initial conditions um, and the boundary conditions, okay, for the moment, because, uh, well, we are not uh, going into the details of that, but this clearly, uh, well, this is a, a model which is reasonable uh, to study uh, this question. And then uh, you see this is, a, this is a simulation, again, of a random waves, uh, of course, uh, for, uh, for deterministic waves, so you, you found a, a, a behavior which is uh, periodic, et cetera, et cetera. But here, because of, the, of this uh, external uh, random input, you find uh, something which is much more irregular. So this is the simulation for two, two cases, okay? So another interesting example, again, given by Walsh, is uh, on 
the the evolution of the uh, neural uh, of the yeah of the, the evolution of the neural impulses um, uh, well in so in the in the brain so how 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 does it happen so here you have a, a picture of a neuron so neurons look like that okay so we'll concentrate on neurons of this form which is uh, which are here so a, a neuron consists of uh, well it's a, it's a cell which is like that so it consists of a cell body which is here and then it's surrounded by what is called a, so sort of a branches which is, which are called the, the dendrites and uh, so the impulses that uh, they receive from other cells came here okay and then, well, after after whatever physiological uh, uh, process, so these uh, impulses or these messages uh, propagate through the axon of the cell, which is this part of the cell or this part, etc. So propagate here, and they propagate. Uh, I mean, um, uh, physically, this is an electrical signal. Okay, so there is a potential. An action potential, it's an electrical signal which travels through the axon. Okay. And uh, this, uh, this uh, potential is uh, gathered by uh, the terminal branches of the axon, which are uh, uh, put together with or which uh, are, uh, yeah, so stick to uh, another cell like that. So through the dendrites, etc., etc. Okay. So you see the, you see the mechanism. So this evolution of the electrical potential in neurons was described first, I think, by uh, Hodgkin and Hadley in the 50s of the last century. And uh, they give that as a system of equations, so very, very complicated, but uh, yeah, but realistic. And a, a simplified version of the model of Hodgkin and Hadley is what is called the cable equation. So the cable equation is a, a partial differential equation like this one. This is the cable equation, which is in, in, in black. And again, so you have uh, uh, initial and boundary conditions, okay? So uh, then what, uh, what uh, Walsh proposed is uh, to uh, introduce an external, uh, again, an external uh, random forcing. So why? So because these stimulations or these messages that uh, arrive uh, to the neuron uh, through the dendrites actually uh, uh, are random because you cannot control, you know, uh, at what speed they came or uh, there are many, if there are uh, less now, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So there are random stimulation, uh, stimulations that act on the potential. And therefore, it makes sense to modify this cable uh, equation uh, with um, uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, um, uh, stochastic, stochastic process, this external uh, fluctuation. And actually, then, well, this has been proved to be very, very successful. So it gives a better explanation of uh, what uh, uh, neurophysiologists observe. And finally, to just uh, two examples, which are more uh, of mathematical nature. So one is what is called the parabolic Anderson model, uh, which uh, uh, is a model. So these are equations that are models uh, of something. So these are a model for the diffusion of particles in a random environment. So now the, the, the environment, so the, the, the solution is random, so to say, and then the, the particles move in this random environment. So physicists uh, have found that, uh, uh, so the, the model uh, to, for the evolution of, uh, of these uh, particles uh, is uh, this equation, this equation here, so uh, it is like a wave equation where the, uh, the nonlinear term is, uh, so to say, linear. <laughs> so in the sense that sigma of utx is utx, okay? So why I mentioned the parabolic Anderson model? So first, because it's very important in physics, but also because it is related with the KPZ equation, which, which was uh, really in the core of the... Of the lecture by Martin Heider, okay? So KPZ equation is a central object in, in mathematical physics and probability theory. And um, uh, it uh, models, it is a model for the evolution of interface between two regimes, okay? So this is the, the KPZ equation, okay? So the KPZ equation, as you see, uh, so uh, if you forget about this term, is like the wave, uh, the heat equation. 
okay, forget about this term. But now here we add a term, which is, uh, so the gradient to the square. So this turns the, this turns the problem into a nonlinear one, and this is much more, much more difficult. But the relation uh, with uh, KPZ and parabolic Anderson model is the following. If you uh, take the solution to this equation, so that's formal, but uh, it helps to understand things, okay? If you take the solution H satisfying this equation, and you take the exponential, so then it's very easy by, you know, you, you compute that, you will see that actually, uh, this uh, exponential satisfies the parabolic Anderson model. So that means that the parabolic Anderson model is like the linearization in quotation marks of the KPZ, of the solution of the KPZ equation. So th these are, uh, again, two equations that appear uh, in modeling, okay? So, and uh, I think that uh, I am done with, uh, uh, I started at uh, 10 past nine, isn't it? Yeah? Yes. It's correct? Okay, very good. So now um, I, 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 will, I will pass to the, to the second part of this lecture. So to give some basics of the theory of SPDs. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> so uh, in fact, I have started with a very, very abstract uh, um, de definition or presentation of a stochastic partial differential equation. But uh, I suppose that many, uh, many of you have already discovered that the examples I have, uh, I have uh, uh, exhibited are much more concrete. Okay, well, examples are supposed to be concrete anyway. Okay, but are much more particular, so to say. So um, uh, this is the purpose to, to, uh, of, this, uh, of this slide here. So from this uh, very general uh, um, expression, I will go uh, down to a, a concrete one. So I will assume that, uh, so this expression here actually can be, uh, can be written as the action of a partial differential operator L minus a function B of T, X, and unknown. So no derivatives here, okay? And similarly, so this term here uh, can be expressed in this way. So that means here we don't, we don't have dependence on the partial derivatives, but only on u, okay? So we turn from this model to this model, which is a particular case. And actually all the examples we have seen before uh, fit this pattern. Why, for example, in the case of the heat equation, so the operator L was the heat operator, the partial derivative of T minus the Laplacian. In the case of the wave equation is the wave operator, which is, well, is the second derivative, uh, uh, partial derivative with respect to T minus the Laplacian. In the case of the KPZ equation, so L is a nonlinear operator because we had the uh, gradient to the square, okay? So all the examples we have seen so far uh, are of this form. Okay, so that's much easier also to, to, to visualize or to understand. Okay, so what, uh, what, what does it mean a closed form expression uh, for uh, SPD? So it means a formula which, uh, is, uh, which expresses the unknown. So remember that the unknown is the temperature or the displacement of the string, et cetera. So this is U of Tx. So it's a formula which expresses U of Tx in terms of the input. So what are the input? The input are B, sigma, and the noise, okay? So uh, one can say, so formally, of course, if I have this expression here, so if L has an inverse, so I will put U equal to the inverse of this operator applied to this right-hand side, okay? So of course, uh, well, th these are uh, differential operators, so it's not, uh, it's not so easy to, to, talk, to talk about the inverses and to represent the inverses. And here we have to rely on the theory of partial differential equations, which says that under some circumstances, actually L minus one exists and has a representation in terms of what is called the fundamental solution or the green function uh, of the operator L, okay? So that's 
PDE theory, which allow us to write this, which a priori was formal, as an integral equation. Okay, so the, 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 I insist, so the integral representation of L minus one is given by some functions or distributions that are called the fundamental solution in the case of initial value problem or the green function in the case of uh, um, a boundary value problem. And then it turns out that U can be represented as the solution to the homogeneous equation. So take here LU equal to zero. So this has a solution because it's deterministic. So we assume that it has a solution. So this will be the solution to the uh, homogeneous equation. So the deterministic part plus, you know, this term. And this term is expressed in integral form using this fundamental solution. Okay, so that's a very nice expression, but uh, of course, if you go to the, to the examples, uh, well, it will be more or less nice uh, uh, depending on the form of gamma, right? So in the case of the heat equation, gamma is uh, quite simple, is just the density of a Gaussian random variable with variance to R. So in the case of the heat equation, gamma is a function and it's a function which is smooth. It, it has a singularity at zero, but except, uh, except at this point, the function is smooth. So you may think that, okay, so having expressions like that, uh, well, uh, gamma at least is nice, so the, what is maybe not nice is W, okay? But in the case of the, of the wave equation, things became much worse. So let's, let's uh, for example, focus on the case of the dimension three, spherical waves, okay? So in dimension three, so the classical theory of PDEs shows that the fundamental solution is a measure. And this measure is a measure concentrated on the sphere centered at zero with radius R. If you go to higher dimensions, which maybe physically is not so relevant, but anyway, mathematically it is, so then the fundamental solution is a true distribution. So it's no more a function, not, not a measure, it's a distribution. So now, uh, so in the expression, in the closed form expression that uh, I allude before, so forget about this integral, but concentrate on the integral with respect to the noise, we have two problems here. So we have a problem which is the noise, but we have also a problem with gamma because gamma is a measure. So that's a very, a very, I mean, interesting, but also difficult object, okay? So then uh, this summarizes what I say. So if we focus only on the term uh, with sigma, so forget about B, uh, because I, I would not have time uh, to go into the details uh, uh, on that, so then uh, you see that uh, you have a problem in giving a meaning to uh, uh, integrals of these types. And integrals of these types are called stochastic integrals. So because you have stochasticity here, but you have also stochasticity in, the, uh, in, in here. And well, in the particular case where sigma is constant, so you will still have a problem, for example, in the case of the wave equation, because you encounter here the translation of a measure, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So there is a need for a theory of a stochastic integration, okay? So how to perform a stochastic integration? So what we will do, and now maybe I will, I will not um, go in the, too much into the details of, of that. So the, we will do is, okay, so uh, Ito, Ito has the same problem with the stochastic differential equation. He also has to give a meaning to a stochastic integral with respect to Brownian motion, okay? Because uh, the, the, his, uh, his um, fluctuate, fluctuating term was exactly a term x dot x times b dot. So the integral representation was like that. So Ito produces or uh, set up a theory for these stochastic integrals. So what to do in the case where instead of Brownian motion, here we have a noise which depends on time and on a space. So let's focus on the case 
where we have a space a space time white noise. So the W dot that I wrote at several instances, okay, I never said what it is. I call it noise. Okay. So now the theory of stochastic integrals, we need, it will depend on the noise we put. So assume that the noise we put is what is called a space-time white noise. So what is a space-time white noise? So space-time white noise is a stochastic process, which is Gaussian. So now we know what that means. So that means that if we take N of these A's, the finite dimensional distributions are Gaussian, zero mean, and the covariance is given by the Lebesgue measure of the intersection of these two sets. This is an exact uh, generalization of Brownian motion. So in Brownian motion, there was always only time. Here we have time and space, okay? So that's the generalization of Brownian motion. So it turns out, and this is, I mean, it's quite easy, but not so easy, that in fact, space-time white noise has a representation in terms of a sequence of independent Brownian motions. Have to use uh, Hubert space theory, etc., etc. So space-time white noise can be identified with a sequence of uh, uh, independent Brownian motions. So this led us to, so this is an inspiration for the definition of the stochastic integral of a process with respect to white noise. So what will be the definition? Of course, if W is identified with a sequence of independent Brownian motions, so let's use a Parseval inequality and propose as a stochastic integral with respect to white noise a series of a stochastic integrals in the Ito sense. Okay? So this is a way to pass from infinite dimensions to finite dimensions. Of course, we don't lose the infinite dimensional character. So this is the stochastic integral we can use. And this kind of a stochastic integral has been developed by uh, essentially starting with, the, as I, I said before, the pioneer uh, work by Walsh and then by the Prato Sapsic, Robert Dalang, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So this is very, very sketchy. Uh, so uh, the, the theory we need to give a sound uh, meaning to uh, the SPD. Okay? And now, once we have the rigorous expression of the solution to the SPD, we have to formalize what we are looking for. So we are looking for the random field solution to this equation. So this is an equation, okay? So you have u here, u here, u here, it's an integral equation, okay? So the definition we will use is the definition of random field solution to this equation, which means a stochastic process indexed in time and in space such that it satisfies this identity for all t and x, almost surely. So that means that uh, we are interested in solutions to this equation that gives the behavior in time and in space. And this because of the demands of random modeling. Okay, because in random modeling, we would like to, kn to know what are the evolutions in time, but also in space. Okay, so of course, uh, uh, the existence of uh, of uh, um, random field solutions. Uh, so that's a mathematical problem. Okay, so now the first thing is, okay, so uh, are there existence and uniqueness of solution uh, uh, theorems? What is the dependence of the initial data? Uh, what are the properties of the solutions? Uh, can we perform numerical approximations, et cetera, et cetera. And this is a very exciting field, which uh, well, many people uh, working since, uh, since the 90s, I, I would say, so, yeah, starting in the 90s of last century. And it's uh, very exciting uh, because uh, so the solutions are uh, a very nice mathematical objects. So like uh, here you have another simulation. So, um, and I put, uh, I put uh, this uh, picture here by purpose because uh, in the last part of the lecture, I, I will um, I will like to 
to talk about uh, these properties, analytical and geometric, of the solutions from uh, uh, the perspective of uh, probabilistic potential analysis. Okay, so now in the 10 minutes that uh, are left, so I would like to, to talk a little bit on these problems. So uh, as an interlude, um, I formulate here uh, two kinds of questions. For example, uh, how regular the trajectories of you are? Okay, so very naive but important question. Do the trajectories of you, so you is the solution to the equation, okay, to the SPD. So uh, do the trajectories of you hit points or uh, sets, okay? So you see they are very irregular. So if I put uh, here, uh, you know, some points in the space, would it be hit uh, with a positive probability or not, or what, what happens? Okay, so these are two naive questions, very concrete questions. And uh, for example, in the case of the stochastic heat equation, the, the stochastic heat equation, I have uh, put uh, several examples in the, you know, the example in neurophysiology, et cetera, et cetera. In other, in other cases, the, also the, the, the the extension of the Fourier, the Fourier equation, etc. So, in the case of the stochastic heat equations, we have very precise answers to these two questions. For example, uh, the answer to the first one is that the trajectories. So, the trajectories mean that uh, here I fix. So here I fix omega. There is omega everywhere. Okay. So I fix omega, and uh, this is a function of t and x, right? So then if I fix omega, almost surely, so out of a set of null probability, so uh, uh, the function u of tx is jointly continuous in time and in space. And it is further continuous in t with exponent alpha less than one four and in x with exponent beta less than one two, okay? So the regularity in space is the double, so to say, uh, of the regularity in terms of a Hilder degree of the regularity in time, okay? So let me, let me say that uh, if you consider um, a deterministic heat equation, so then the regularity in T is uh, one over two, less than one over two, okay? So here the less than one over four came from the uh, influence of the effect of the random fluctuation. So you see that uh, things uh, change with a random fluctuation. This can be proved by probabilistic method, okay? And then concerning the second, the second um, question, so does, uh, the, does do the trajectories of you hit points? So, uh, for example, there is a very nice result saying that uh, points are rich uh, with positive probability if and only if the dimension of the system of equations is less than six, okay? So instead of one equation, you consider a system of the equations, of the equations, and if this is less than six, of course, this includes the case equal to one, if this is less than six, then points are rich with positive probability, and they are not rich if this is greater or equal than six. And uh, well, it's not by chance that the six appears here because six is, of course, the sum of four, oh, sorry, four and two, okay? So the sum of uh, the inverse of the Hilder degree in time and the inverse of the Hilder degree in space is this six. And this is not surprising even because, you know, the fact that points are hit or not hit will depend on the regularity of your object. Okay, but that's a very mathematical, very beautiful result because it gives you the, the precise uh, um, uh, statement. Okay, okay, and now this brings me to really to the part three. So this was a, an interlude. So let's put uh, this question, who already appears, uh, which already appears in the previous one. So do the trajectories of solutions to systems of SPD hit? sets with positive probability, okay? So let's, let's raise this question that I answered before in the case of points and for the heat equation, okay? 
So let me describe the problem. So um, now in general, so assume that you have a random field. It can be the solution to a stochastic partial differential equation. But in, in principle, it's something which depends on omega, okay? And on time, space, whatever. So we have that. And uh, this is a, a, a RD value. So uh, up to now, D was equal to one, but we can generalize that. And then we, we ask the following questions. So how many sample paths? So that, that, uh, here we have a collection of sample paths. We fix omega, we have a path. We fix another omega, we have another path, okay? So how many sample paths visit a deterministic set up or hit this deterministic set, okay? So uh, what does it mean in probability how many? Well, how many will mean how much likely, how likely it is that these sequences, uh, this, um, sorry, this collection of sample paths visit the set A. So we are interested in the probability of the set of omegas such that when we restrict our, our sample path to a subset of Rm, can be all Rm, okay, when we restrict the paths to this Q, it intersects, it visits, it hits the set A, okay? So we are interested in that. So what we can do is to try to prove upper and lower bounds for this quantity, okay? If we know that, you know, these upper and lower bounds are more or less the same, so then we will have a quite pre precise behavior of this probability. So, uh, but uh, if, uh, if we would like to take this approach, so we may ask uh, the next question. So and in terms of what would you like to upper and lower bound this probability? In terms of what? And we will do that in terms of um, uh, notions uh, of geometric measure theory, which uh, captures not only uh, if the set A is big or small, but also how is the geometric shape of it, okay? So we will upper and lower, find upper and lower bounds of these probabilities uh, in terms of the Hausdorff measure or the capacity of the set A. So it doesn't matter if you don't know what the capacity of the Hausdorff measure is. I am sure that you know about the Hausdorff measure. Maybe the capacity is not so popular, but uh, you have to keep in mind that this is a, a notion of a geometric measure theory, which takes into account the shape and the uh, size, okay? Big, small, or also very intricate or not, okay? And we take this type of measures because, of course, in, uh, in answering this question, uh, there, is, uh, there are the following uh, elements that will play a role. And this is the regularity of the sample path in general, sample paths are irregular. So this is, for example, a simulation of the sample paths of the uh, 2D Brownian motion, but also the size of and the geometry of A. A, I haven't wrote it, but imagine that uh, A is also a very intricate uh, uh, set. So then uh, possibilities of heating will be higher than if A is just a body, you know, a solid body here. And the dimensions also will play a role because the dimensions gives you the degree of uh, freedom of your system, okay? So this problem has been addressed uh, many, many years ago for the Brownian motion. And it was addressed by Kakutani, okay? So Kakutani proved that for Brownian motion, you have an upper and lower bound in terms of the same quantity up to multiplicative constants. And this is the D minus two capacity of A. Well, it turns out, for example, that if A is a singleton, if A is a point, this quantity is zero if and only if D is less than two. So this kind of results allows you to deduce that Brownian motion hit points only in dimension one, for example, okay? So this result by Kakutani opened the door to a, a very uh, important field in probability theory, which is called the probabilistic potential theory. This was initiated by Du. This is a very important field, not only by its relation to uh, partial differential equations, to partial elliptic mm, 
differential equations, but also because even if you think that this is naive, in fact, you can derive from, from that the fractal properties of Brownian motion. The fractal properties of Brownian motion. For example, what is the Hausdorff uh, dimension of the range and things like that. So this is related with the fractal properties of the process. And now very recently, well, not so recently, but starting in the year 2002, a similar program has been developed not for Brownian motion or not for Markov processes that were studied in the framework of Duke theory, but in the framework of stochastic partial differential equations. This is my last, last slide. So in the framework of stochastic partial differential equations, we have random fields we have, uh, that have uh, trajectories which can be, uh, well, very, very nasty or very nice, or it depends on your taste, okay, but in any way very involved, okay? So now, can we answer questions like that and derive fractal properties uh, like, uh, uh, like it is the case for the Brownian motion? So the problem is that with Brownian motion, the law of Brownian motion, remember that was related with Gaussian law. So these probabilities can be compute quite explicitly. This is not the case for the solutions to stochastic partial differential equations. But there is another toolbox, another theory called malleable calculus, which allows you to decide or to derive whether the solutions to stochastic partial differential equations do have or don't have densities, okay? So then using malleable calculus, we can uh, answer the question whether a specific stochastic partial differential equations, so the solutions have densities at the fixed points. So with these two ingredients, the knowledge of the trajectories and the properties, existence and properties of the densities, we have been able to derive criteria, so theorems that say, okay, if this happens, we would probably have, uh, we are able to prove results like that or similar like that, okay? So uh, this is, so the, the, the first results that uh, we proved that this was uh, done in collaboration with uh, Robert Dalang, but also uh, Yiming Chao uh, has uh, a lot of results uh, on that in the Gaussian case. We, we studied the non-Gaussian case. And with this criteria, we were able, and many, many other people, to find uh, similar uh, results, uh, not, so, not so nice as that, that one, but uh, well, uh, approximately like that, for uh, solutions to uh, stochastic partial di differential equations. And just to close that, so this is an example, uh, so quite recent example, uh, where the heating probability for the solution to the heat equation can be lower bounded by the capacity and upper bounded by, uh, by the Hausdorff measure of uh, given parameters. And with that, also, as I said before, one can study fractal properties of, for example, the stochastic heat equation, but also from other equations like the wave equation, Poisson's equations, or uh, SPDs with fractional noise. And uh, with this, uh, I think that, yes, I, I run out of time. I am sorry about that. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Um, that's all. Thank you very much. All right. Uh... That's all right, Professor Sansoli. Thank you. Uh, we will move to text and to prepare the questions. Uh, we will have some songs, uh, right, Professor Eddie? <clears throat> okay, Professor Rudy will uh, uh, do the song. Uh, but Rudy? Yes. Yeah, please. So should I stop sharing? Uh, yes, uh, please. Yeah. Yes? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you very much for your <laughs> I was a little bit too, too, too long, probably. Yeah. No, that's all right, that's all right. Parode? Yes, I will stop the, the song. Okay. Me, can you see the song here? Yeah, okay. <laughs>
It's a really very very nice. So this, the, there was an Anglong performance. An Anglong, yeah, yeah. Anglong instrument. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it's, uh, uh, from nice. bamboo. Uh, yeah. Professor yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I have right. noticed that, but also, yeah. So yeah. then the mixing with the the, the bass was yeah. very 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 nice, and the rhythm also. Yeah. So congratulations. So this is an invitation for you to come to uh, Bando. Bandung. <laughs> okay, so you can see uh, Krishna. <laughs> okay, uh, Professor Eddie, thank you. Uh, Professor Mata Sansore, uh, for all participants, uh, you may ask the question uh, directly, uh, but we have here also in the uh, chat room um, uh, questions from Muhammad Ismail Yunus. Um, uh, you can invite he is uh, asking Yunus. a question about yeah uh, Muhammad Yunus you want to uh, speak directly to uh, professor Marta hello hello uh, yes. uh, excuse me sorry yes yes yes, yes please uh, uh, thank you professor Marta for the lecture i i actually quite impressed because uh, i kind of read about the stochastic differential, differential equation and kind of confused about every notation in, inside of it. So this is give me a good uh, good, good overview about what kind of things that I will face if I trying to study uh, further in, in the SPDEs. So my question is in regard to stability and well, uh, how could we extract stability and bifurcation information if we have a nonlinear SDEs, uh, be, it, be it stochastic ordinary differential equations or SPDEs, do we have kind of dynamical system method that we can use like in the deterministic or DEs or is there something else new around this, around this field? Thank you, uh, thank you, that, that's my question. Yeah, th thank you. Thank you very really much for uh, this uh, uh, very interesting question. So uh, there is actually a, a whole theory of uh, uh, stochastic dynamical systems, which apply to, uh, to uh, um, uh, in the case of finite dimensional, infinite dimensional, so to say for S SDEs and for SPDs. Uh, I have never worked on that, so I am not an expert of that. But uh, you can you can look um, at uh, references. For example, I don't know uh, Peter in Keller. Uh, Peter in Keller has worked a lot on that, and so you can probably found find uh, so get uh, you know uh, trace back uh, papers papers uh, and collaborators uh, uh, of him. Um, uh, Schmalfus also is another 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 uh, colleague that has worked on that. And then uh, so the methods the methods so the, this is uh, um, well I am not an expert and maybe I will say some nonsense is but so uh, I apologize for that. But uh, the, uh, what I have seen because well I read something also. So what I have seen so the methods are like uh, what happens also in in other problems of SPDs or SDEs. So it's a sort of nature. So some analytical methods that are used uh, uh, are also common to the deterministic and non-deterministic uh, non-deterministic case. Okay, and then of course there is always the inputs of a stochastic analysis in order to deal with the terms which are uh, really uh, stochastic, like for example the stochastic intervals. So then the results you have are different from the, the from the from so the the, the behavior of a, a stochastic uh, random dynamical system is not the same as a deterministic one, okay? So the, 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 the chaotic behavior is described in a different way. And this is natural because, uh, because uh, well, it's not because by, but you have already other examples. For example, in this lecture, I mentioned that the regularity of the solution to the stochastic uh, heat equation is not the same as in the deterministic case. And you have seen also these features. So these features also, uh, so these, these, are, these are simulations, but they, they show you that the, that the behavior is uh, um, different, okay? It's, it's, it's different. So um, I would say the methods are a combination of both, but it's not that you, you, you can derive uh, 
uh, results in the stochastic case from the deterministic case. I mean, in general, it, it doesn't work that way, okay? But uh, the methods used in, in one case can be improved or, you know, upgra upgraded uh, to, to methods that um, can be used in the, in the stochastic case. So we generalize the method in here, is it? Yeah. Okay, thank you for the answer. You're welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, we invite now uh, Dr. Denny Van Al Hakim. Uh, yeah, I see. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, uh, Professor Marta Sansole, thank you very much for your uh, nice lecture, nice talk. Uh, I have uh, more or less uh, three naive uh, questions. Uh, the first one uh, in the PD, usually one uh, generalized uh, Laplacian to uh, certain elliptic operators. Is it uh, also the case in SPDE to study this type of uh, generalization? That's yeah. the first question, yes. Uh, and the second one the, is the limitation if for the extension from finite dimension to L2 or uh, Hilbert spaces due to the inner product, or we can also study for LP where P is non uh, two. That's the second question. And the third question would be uh, about the regularity of the trajectories U. Is the number half and a quarter is uh, in the sense of it's uh, uh, they are sharp or not? I mean, we can, can we replace it by another other number? That's uh, the third question. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, gracias. So you, are, you speak Spanish, that's very um, Not <laughs> just a little bit. A little bit. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Denis. So uh, concerning the first question, so fortunately I, I can I have access to the chat, so I have not forgotten. So uh, yes, uh, so uh, I here I try to, to, to keep to the simplest cases of the well-known uh, uh, heat equation, the well-known uh, wave equation, because as I said at the beginning, so the, the, the aim is to be uh, accessible to uh, many mathematicians, even mathematicians that are not uh, maybe familiar very much, very much familiar with partial differential equations. But uh, so, so this, uh, when, when I started, you have seen that I, I, I put a very general form of, uh, of a stochastic PD. Okay, and this allows for uh, uh, operators that are uh, of non-divergence, divergence form, uh, uh, elliptic operators, uh, uh, degenerated operators, non-degenerated operators, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Hyperbolic operators, of course, the, the heat uh, in the wave equation is a hyperbolic operator, but is a quite simple, uh, quite simple one. So this this can be this can be done. But um, well, it, it it works similarly. At in the, as in the case of PDEs. So uh, th there are not general theorems that say, uh, you know, uh, the solutions are in that way. Or uh, of course, there are groups. You can group, you can uh, put families of, uh, of SPDs, like uh, for PDEs, where some results apply. This, this uh, can be done and is done. Okay. But um, so my answer to your question is yes, you can go far beyond examples. Uh, I have uh, I have uh, presented here. Okay, so uh, yeah, you are happy with the with answer. Uh, thank you. Okay, so the second second one is um, uh, so um, yeah this this part I explain it very very fast. So um, when I said okay, so here the fundamental the fundamental question is to give a meaning to the stochastic integral. Okay. And then in order to give a meaning to this stochastic integral, so I rely on the Ito theory, with, uh, which uh, does the job in the one dimensional or finite dimensional case. And then I go to infinite dimensionals uh, by projection into uh, Hilbert space, which is L2. Okay, and uh, your question means that you know you know well the subject, or you know quite uh, quite many things of the subject, because uh, this L2 is very much related to the covariance structure of the space-time white noise. 
So space-time white noise, the covariance structure, uh, uh, if you remember, so the covariance between WA and WB is the Lebesgue measure uh, of A intersection B, which is the L2 norm okay, of the indicator function of A, uh, uh, um, uh, the scalar product of, uh, sorry, yeah, the scalar product of indicator function of A, indicator function, of, no, not scalar product, indicator function of A, indicator function of B, and then the L2 norm delta norm of that, okay? So now, if you have uh, a noise, which is, uh, it was written in the slides, but I, I well, I, I have looked at my watch and I say, okay, so I skip that. So um, if uh, if the structure of the covariance of your noise is, no, is not white, so what, what does it mean, white noise? So white noise in time and in the space means that at each t and at, and at each x, uh, the, the, the random variables are uncorrelated. Okay, so they are uncorrelated. So uh, th this is uh, quite reasonable in, in, in many examples, but in, in, in many other examples, it's also equally uh, reasonable to consider noises which are correlated in a space. You know, in many physical phenomena, so in a space, it could be very well that uh, there is a, a real interaction. So that the correlation uh, is not in the form of the Lebesgue measure, but in terms of the kernel. For example, a risk kernel, something which decreases when the distance uh, becomes larger and larger. Okay, so then the L2 space that I mentioned here is replaced by, by a Hilbert space. And this Hilbert space is actually the auto-reproducing kernel space of the Gaussian process. Say in plain words. So that means a Hilbert space which gathers the structure of the covariance in a space. Okay, so that means that instead of this L2 space, you can put an other uh, Hilbert spaces. So now your question is going beyond the Hilbert space, so like a LP, okay? So this, the theory of a stochastic integrals with respect to Gaussian noises, um, I mean, you never encounter this situation. So whether there are noises where you encounter this situation, so then you have to go beyond Gaussian. So the, the, the question is whether going beyond Gaussian makes a lot of sense or not. Because, uh, so um, there are two cases which make a lot of uh, sense. One is Gaussian, the other one is pure jumps, when you have these continuums, for example, you know, in, in stock assets or things like that. So uh, what happens is that uh, Gaussian, uh, so why you take Gaussian? So uh, Gaussian uh, is justified by the central limit theorem, okay? like normal is justified by, uh, by a central limit theorem. So if you have many independent impulses after, after a sort of a standardization in the limit, okay, you get, uh, so by the central limit theorem, you have a Gaussian. And this is true in finite dimensional, the classical theorem, but this is also true in infinite, infinite dimensional. For example, you have Donsker theorem for the Brownian motion and, and so on and so on. So I am not aware of cases where you need, instead of a Hilbert space, a, a, a space like LP. But maybe this is my ignorance. So I, I, I cannot think of an example where you encounter such a situation. So mathematically, this will be maybe an interesting question. Yeah, um, and as you say, so there is, there is the underlying theory for dealing with these cases. So uh, I found this uh, question really really very interesting, but um, beyond the Hubert space, I, I don't have an answer now. And then the third and last question, yeah. So the third and last question was about uh, whether the regularity of uh, uh, the trajectories, uh, I, I said that um, in the case of the heat equation, uh, U is held there continuous in, in time uh, and in space, and uh, so the threshold was one four and one two respectively. So this is sharp. So uh, uh, it can be proved, well, it has been proved that it is not uh, Hilder continuous for uh, of order um, uh, alpha and beta greater than these thresholds. So that's sharp, yes. Like uh, for Ronian motion. So for Ronian motion, you know that uh, also is sharp. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
So this can be proof. This this can be proof. Um, I'm, I mean, uh, well, uh, analyzing analyzing the the linear case, the simplest case. So in the simplest case, this is not the case, and uh, this can be proved using theory of Gaussian processes. Mm -hmm. Because in the using theory of uh, Gaussian process, you have characterization. So if and only, yeah. Okay, so that's my answer. Okay. Thank, you. Yes. Thank you very much for your explanation. Really good Thank explanation. You. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for from the participants? Uh, um, it is uh, three thirty-five ID. Um, um, if it is not, uh, thank you again, uh, Professor Marta Sansole. I will uh, return to the Professor Eddie Bascoro. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. You. So thanks again to Professor Marta Sansole for nice and inspiring uh, lecture today. Okay. So, and uh, on behalf of the Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Sciences. Uh, we would like to present some certificate to Professor Mata Sansole. So please uh, allow me to share the certificate for you. Okay. Oh, thank so you. have you thank seen? You. So this is the certificate uh, signed by our dean. And thank we, you. we also uh, present you some uh, caricature of your talk, of your uh, photograph. So uh, this oh, that's, uh, that's very nice. <laughs> this this caricature was uh, yeah. the, this uh, produced by our student, of of course yeah. by the computer uh, computer application. So yeah. Ah, so, so you took this, the picture uh, and then you you process uh, you process uh, with the computer yes. and this is the outcome that's of right. that. Ah, yes. very nice, very nice. <laughs> I hope you like it. So yeah, we, I like it we, very much. So you can send me the name of the Yes, uh, of, we, we, will send, send you, like uh, we will send you yeah. both uh, documents, uh, certificate and also oh. this. Uh, oh, you are very kind. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <It's really nice. laughs> yeah. okay. So that means uh, we. Uh, this is uh, the end of uh, the program today. So uh, again, thank you, Professor Mata Sansole for nice lectures today. And also thanks to everybody here to attend this uh, lecture. The next lecture will be uh, next uh, month, uh, August uh, 9th. Yeah. And uh, the lecture will be delivered by Professor Gil Kalai from Hebrew University of J Jerusalem. So uh, see you again in next month. Uh, uh, in mathematics distinguished lecture series. Okay, Professor Marta, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Marta. Yeah. Thank you and very much for the work. Uh, yeah, so okay. <laughs> invitation. Okay, and... so good, good <laughs> morning. Yeah, you just <laughs> <laughs> have a morning. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> right. okay. Bye-bye.